Hey, First Baptist, you know what time it is. It's time for Coffee with Chris. So grab your favorite mug, grab a cup of joe, let's sit down and have a chat. This week we're talking about Thanksgiving and how we can make it a meaningful family experience. All right, yes, uh, I don't normally drink out of this cup, but a well-meaning church member wanted to bless me because they heard I was cutting way back on my coffee intake. Actually, I just gave up caffeinated coffee. I'm still drinking five or six cups a day, and I love it, but uh, I love my cup as well. So I figured it could be featured at least one time in Coffee with Chris. So if you don't have a giant cup like this, uh, you should get one, and to the person who gave it to me, thank you very, very much. Well, Thanksgiving is this week, and I'm really looking forward to spending some time with my family. Where Marcy and I are going to be traveling up to uh, Knoxville to spend some time with my grandkids, and uh, just looking forward to hanging out with them. Of course, I'm going to say hi to my kids while I'm up there, my son and daughter-in-law, and I'm going to spend some time with my daughter as well. But um, you know how it is. I really want to love on the grandbabies, and if you're a grandparent, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But Thanksgiving is always a has always been a big deal uh, in my extended family, and uh, we we shared uh, Thanksgiving and celebrated Thanksgiving in a number of different ways uh, growing up. Sometimes we were at my grandma's. Sometimes it was just our family. Sometimes we got sometimes we got invited to go and celebrate with uh, a neighbor or something like that. But ever since I married my wife, we've actually gone and celebrated Thanksgiving. With with her family and their extended family and so not uncommon to have 25 30 people in the house uh, sitting around talking and uh, of course as I became a pastor uh, Thanksgiving took on an even bigger significance for me because I began to think about how to redeem the day and, and try to make it as valuable as possible and so on the few times I've actually gotten to plan a Thanksgiving meal I've always labored to try to make it a, a special time uh, for everyone who participates in Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, it's a, it's a national holiday that we celebrate here in the U.S., but it's actually celebrated uh, in a number of countries around the world. Certainly uh, Liberia, which is an African country that was started by U.S. citizens that moved over there after uh, they were set free from slavery. They celebrate Thanksgiving. Canada celebrates Thanksgiving on the first Monday in October. Uh, Brazil celebrates it on the very same day we do, the fourth Thursday of Thanksgiving. But uh, even though it's a, a national holiday and not necessarily a church holiday, the idea of pausing and reflecting upon our lives and giving thanks for all the blessings in our life is certainly a biblical one. And you, could, you can go to the Psalms and find Psalm after Psalm after Psalm where uh, God's people are instructed, commanded, admonished to give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and his grace and his mercy. And we see that theme, same theme in the New Testament as well. Matter of fact, the Apostle Paul, when he's writing to the Thessalonians, Thessalonian church says this, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And so I want to talk a little bit today and I actually made some notes about how you can redeem your Thanksgiving celebration with your family or make it a little more meaningful uh, than maybe it normally would be. And so I just want to challenge everybody who's watching this to go into Thanksgiving treating it as an opportunity for family worship where you're going to sit around and talk about the goodness of the Lord. Maybe some of you will be spending time with, with family members that don't even believe in the Lord. Uh, it'll still be an opportunity for you to build a relationship and testify of God's goodness in your life as you uh, spend time with them. So plan number one, uh, or step number one is to plan ahead. You cannot wait until the last minute if you actually want to have a meaningful Thanksgiving celebration where uh, intentional conversations are taking place. So as, as you're planning your menu and thinking about what size turkey you need and uh, what pie you're going to serve and what cookies need to be made and whether you're going to have uh, stovetop stuffing or you're going to uh, make homemade stuffing that's uh, flavored like cornbread or whatever it is your favorite item is, spend a little bit of time thinking about an activity or a conversation that can be had amongst family members that will help build relational bridges and ultimately point to the Lord Jesus Christ. So you need to think ahead. And by the way, uh, you do not have to be original in this regard. You can go to Google and uh, just enter in a key phrase like how to make Thanksgiving memorable or meaningful for my family uh, Bible. 
and I promise you there will be a host of things that pop up on the very first page of Google, and so it won't take a lot of research. But one of the things I like to do and have done in the past is just to think through some conversation starters that will work, and I would challenge everybody as they're spending time together to spend at least a little bit of time talking about whatever conversation starter uh, I'd come up with. Now, I mean, Thanksgiving Thursday is a day for football uh, and turkey and naps and as, as well as anything else. And so I don't want to I don't want to rob anybody of the opportunity to take part in these traditional events that the family participates in. You know, if your if your family always pauses to watch a football game in the afternoon, don't turn it off and make them start talking about something else. But prior to that, you can you may have an opportunity to initiate some conversations where you can talk about the Lord. So number one, plan ahead. Just think about how you're going to encourage your family members and friends to think about the Lord Jesus Christ. Number two, communicate your plan ahead of time. You want to give your folks uh, an opportunity to think about it. So as you're sending out invitations on Tuesday or Wednesday, or even um, if you think about it Thursday morning, say, hey, we're gonna eat today at noon. And one of the things we're gonna do during the meal or before the meal, we're just gonna go around the table and we're gonna name one thing that we're thankful for, or we're gonna share how God's been a blessing to us in the last year. And so uh, kind of communicate ahead of time to give people an opportunity to think about what they wanna talk about. Teachers call this pre-encoding. You're giving someone an opportunity to think a little bit more about a topic that you wanna uh, discuss. And so it helps avoid putting someone on the spot. You know, Some people think quickly on their feet, they love to be asked questions, rapid fire, doesn't bother them. But other folks, if you put them on the spot and ask them a question, they're just going to draw a blank. And if you put them on the spot and they draw a blank, that's going to make them feel very uncomfortable and it's not going to lead to meaningful conversations. And so you'll actually rob yourself of an opportunity to initiate a spiritual conversation on Thanksgiving. So uh, plan ahead, number one. Number two, share your plan ahead of time. Don't just spring it on everybody. The other thing you don't want to do, thinking, speaking of springing plans on everybody, is don't let everybody fix a plate, go to the table and say, okay, now wait. Before we eat, let's go around the table and all name 10 things we're thankful for. The last thing you wanna do when someone has a full plate of turkey and stuffing in front of them is tell them that they've gotta wait 10 to 15 minutes before they can eat. That's just not a good way to have meaningful conversations. Everybody's gonna rush through it. So what I would recommend you do is, if you're gonna talk at the dinner table, let everybody get their plate, have some prayer, and then as they sit down, give them a list of questions that you've sent ahead of time and encourage them to talk about it. Or maybe you talk about it afterwards when you're having dessert, those types of things. So number one, plan ahead. Number two, share your plan. Number three, don't make people wait to eat their turkey when it's on their plate because that's never a good idea. As a matter of fact, that's a recipe for disaster. And so a couple of things that, that may help you get some conversation started and turn them towards the Lord this Christmas season. So one thing you can do is just ask everybody to share ahead of time. Say, hey, listen, today at Thanksgiving dinner or tomorrow when we celebrate our Thanksgiving meal, I want you to share one thing that you're thankful for that's happened in the last year. Just one thing. And, and let everybody come prepared to talk. And then as conversation you, as you go around the table, come back to that person, especially the one you're trying to build a relationship with, and ask them why that particular item was so meaningful or so special to them. Another thing you can do is just, if they're struggling to talk, or maybe you have someone uh, in your family with whom you have an estranged relationship or something like that, and, and conversations are gonna be awkward and you're kind of dreading going to Thanksgiving, you know, something you could just say is, uh, hey, I just want you to know I'm thankful for you. And sometimes we need to hear other people say that about us, and that makes a big difference in our lives. And so you'll be a blessing to someone on Thanksgiving if you will tell them that you're thankful for them and you're glad to see them that day. And then afterwards, you can just say, hey, what's happening in your life? Maybe they don't have anything that they're thankful for. Maybe they're, uh, they're, they've had a really tough month or they've experienced a devastating loss. Um, but it's still okay to ask them questions about their life and just listen. So think of some open-ended questions. And an open-ended question is something you don't answer with yes or no. And don't ask them necessarily why they've done something, but just ask them what's happening in their life. Ask them how they're feeling. Ask them how you can be a blessing to them 
in the coming year. And I think if you'll be intentional about starting conversations and you'll plan those conversations around your Thanksgiving meal, you'll find that your family get together and your family celebration is especially meaningful this year. And just like we do with all of our worship service here at church, we spend significant time preparing for them, but we also spend a significant amount of time praying for them that God would do a work. And so if we're going to think about our Thanksgiving celebrations in our home as a family worship service where we're going to give thanks to the Lord and testify of his goodness and his grace in our lives, it would be appropriate for you to pray for that meal, that get together, that celebration as well. So as we think about that, let me pray for you and your Thanksgiving celebrations in your home this uh, Thanksgiving season. And before I go, let me invite you to join us for uh, any of the number of Advent celebrations we're going to have at First Baptist Church Middleburg in the month of December. So we actually kick off our Advent season on November 28th. So when you come back from Thanksgiving, the sanctuary is going to be decorated to the nines. Uh, we're going to have invite cards for you to share with your friends and family. We're, we're, our theme this year is just celebrating a traditional country Christmas. And so we're going to focus on singing a lot of the old Christmas carols that we all know so well. December 12th at 6 p.m. we have a special night of worship. Our choir has been preparing for this for months and so that's going to be a great time. On December 23rd we have a community-wide uh, Christmas Eve service and that's going to be at Middleburg High School in the football stadium. We're anticipating a big crowd for that. And then on Christmas Eve we'll have two worship services uh, in the evening and we'll have we're going to sing Christmas carols. We have some baptism scheduled. We're going to light candles. It's going to be a great opportunity for us just to get together and think deeply about the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ and the advent of his kingdom. So as we go, let me pray for you and ask God's blessing upon your Thanksgiving celebrations to this year. Father, we love you and thank you in the name of Jesus for just uh, that we live in a country where we can pause during a very busy year and just give thanks for all of the blessings that you have poured into our lives. And Father, I pray for every single person watching this video cast today. Lord, I pray that you'd bless them, gift them with a thankful heart, help them to think deeply about the ways that you have been a blessing to them in the last year, help them to remember the truth of the Bible that teaches that every good gift comes from you. And so we pray that you would give us thankful hearts. We pray that your Holy Spirit would all help us and empower us to give thanks to you. And as we testify of your goodness and grace, we pray that you would use our testimony to draw those who are far from you into a close relationship with you through the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, thanks for spending a little time with me this Thanksgiving week. I hope you have a great celebration. It's a privilege to be your pastor, and I can't wait to see you again on Sunday. So until we talk again, make sure you drink plenty of coffee. Maybe not this, cup of, this much coffee every time you drink some, but have plenty of coffee. Spend plenty of time in God's Word, and we'll see you soon.